So as someone who's part of the asexual community, there is a lot that kind of wish that people outside of the community knew. So today I'm going to be talking about just some of the things that us asexuals wish you knew about asexuality. I asked my community what they wish people knew, so all of these things are coming directly from my community and from people who are in the asexual community and what we wish y'all knew about being in this community. Here are just a few things that asexuals wish you knew about asexuality. So just a disclaimer, thank you to everyone who commented on my post talking about this. There are a lot of ones that are similar, so if I don't get to yours, I'm really sorry. And if you want me to make a follow-up video, please be sure to leave a comment that you would like to see that in the comments below. So the first thing we wish you knew about asexuality is that it's not a choice. Just like any other sexuality, anything from gay, lesbian, pan, straight, any sexuality, being asexual is not a choice. We didn't just wake up one day and think, you know what I would absolutely love to do? Just not feel what everyone else in the world is feeling and have people tell you that you're broken, that you're not human for not feeling sexual attraction, that, that you have a mental illness or you have a chemical imbalance in your brain because you don't feel sexual attraction. No one chooses that. That's it. It's not a choice. Asexuality is just like any other sexuality and it's valid. I wish people knew this more. <laughs> Another thing we wish you knew about asexuality is that we can have a libido. This is another thing that a lot of people don't really understand. Asexuality is the lack of sexual attraction. That does not mean that your body does not do certain things or have a libido. They are two separate things. One is your body reacting, doing what it does. The other is a purely attraction-based thing. There are people on the asexual spectrum who do have sex and can have it for plenty of reasons. And before you come at me for being like, oh, you have to be sexually attracted to people to have sex. No, you freaking don't. You do not. There are so many people out there, heterosexual people out there, that are like, oh yeah, I just had sex with this person. I wasn't actually attracted to them, but you know, we still did it. Yo, what's the, what's the difference? What's the difference? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you can have a libido as an asexual person. That does not make you any less asexual. That there are different variations of asexual and aromantic and they are not just pointlessly labeled identities. That all things under the umbrella are valid. 100%. Asexuality along with aromanticism are umbrella terms. They have a lot of labels underneath them. They have a lot of people in the community and all of those labels are there for a reason. I know that a lot of people would claim their Tumblr identities or Tumblr sexualities and doesn't matter where they came from. Personally, I think that if a label is there, someone is going to identify with it and what's the harm of having a word for an experience that someone has. That's just me. That's just my personal opinion. I know that not everyone's gonna agree with that, but that's just how I like to live my life because when it comes down to it, labels are there for the people who use them and that helps them know that they're not alone, which is never a bad thing. So yes, there are no pointless identities under the asexual spectrum umbrella or the aromantic umbrella. And kind of to piggyback off of that last thing, not all asexuals are aromantic. And also just to put in there, not all aromantics are also asexual. They are similar, but they are completely different and your romantic orientation and your sexual orientation don't necessarily have to go together. People need to stop lumping asexuals and aromantics together. There are a lot of asexuals who have romantic attraction and a lot of aromantics who have sexual attraction. There are a lot, a lot. I think the majority of people who are on the asexual spectrum are not aromantic. So for me, I'm biromantic, which means that I I can be romantically attracted to more than one gender, which, you know, papa bless. <laughs> but just because someone is on the asexual spectrum does not inherently mean that they are aromantic. Like I said before, they are two completely separate things. And I know that there are a lot of people who really wish that they would be talked about a little bit more separately. I know why they're talked about in the same kind of vein, but I know people really wish we could kind of like separate the two just to, just to smidge. We all, we love the aromantic community here, love the ace community here, 
but I know that a lot of people get kind of frustrated when people are like, oh, you're asexual, you must be aromantic. Or, oh, you're aromantic, you must be asexual. And they're like, no, I'm, I'm just asexual or I'm just aromantic. The next thing that people who are ace wish you knew is just because someone is ace doesn't mean you can't be in a fulfilling relationship with them. It doesn't automatically mean no physical slash sexual intimacy. Please talk to us about it before assuming that we can or can't do slash feel. So this is 100% correct. As someone who is demisexual, I completely understand and relate to this because when I am feeling sexual attraction to someone, I very much want to be doing those kind of things. But for the majority of the time when I am not feeling that, because I've only ever had like, I'm gonna say three and a half. <laughs> I've only ever felt sexual attraction like three and a half times in my life. I don't feel anything at all. So it literally depends on the person and what they're feeling. I feel like this goes for anyone when you're trying to do anything intimate or sexual with anyone asking what they're willing to do, what they're not willing to do is just good in general. So it's not just asexual people that you need to do that with. But if you are interested in someone who's on the asexual spectrum, don't assume that they're not just gonna flat out do nothing. There are sex neutral people, sex positive people. Not all asexuals are sex negative or sex repulsed. It's just about the individual and what they're comfortable with. It's always just a good idea to ask before doing anything anyway, regardless if the person is asexual or not. That it's not something we just need to work through in therapy. I'm all in favor of therapy for working through many things and have benefited from my time in therapy, but asexuality is not psychosis. So unfortunately, this is a very common thing that gets told to asexuals or people who are on the asexual spectrum for a very long time and there's still a very real misconception within the medical and, and psych community that asexuality is a hormone imbalance or that you need to fix it. It kind of is reminiscent of how people used to see homosexuality and lesbians having mental illness and conversion therapy. Asexuals also have a history of conversion therapy, going through certain things to try to fix their asexuality, which is not okay and was medically in- not induced. Medically approved because people think that asexuality is a psychosis and it's not. I know that's something that I've heard people say and distinctly a co-worker of mine, I distinctly remember them saying, oh, people who are asexual like probably have hormone imbalances and that was in like 2018, 2019, um, around that time. So it's still a very real thing that people think about asexuals, that they say to asexuals and I know that there are some psychologists that still think this and it can be really scary trying to go into therapy not knowing whether or not you as the asexual person trying to go to therapy will actually be believed and listened to by your therapist because of these common misconceptions that the mental health community has about people on the asexual spectrum. Honestly, I'd be over the moon for people just to know that we exist. Way too much of my life is explaining that asexuality is a thing. Literally, one of my happiest moments all week was a straight aloe person recognizing my ace pride sticker and, no and knowing what it meant and being cool with it. I love that so much. That's so sweet. And honestly, this was something that I've been thinking about a lot. And I know that a lot of people in my comments feel the same way. People genuinely don't know about asexuality. I know people still think that the A in LGBTQIA plus stands for ally and not asexuality or aromanticism. And it can be exhausting being part of the community that doesn't really get highlighted a lot. Like there's not a lot of media representation. I'm pretty sure I could count on one hand the amount of characters that are asexual in media today, which is why I love doing what I do and supporting other asexual content creators because we need to let people know that we're here. It's a thing. We're like, what, 1.7% of the population, I want to say, somewhere around there. And there are so many people who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and just hearing the label asexual and are recognizing and realizing that's how they felt their whole life and just didn't have the vocabulary around it because they didn't they didn't know it was a thing. They didn't realize you could be asexual. So yes, 
having people just know that asexuality is a thing would be a blessing. Literally just mwah, so good. Another thing people on the asexual spectrum wish you knew was that we are not just straight slash allosexual, but not interested in that at this time. I don't know how else I can explain this, but I struggle with that with my parents. They're only okay with me being aro ace because they don't see that as being queer, which they consider a sinful choice, I might add. Somehow a lack of attraction doesn't count as not being straight, even though being any kind of allosexual requires having attraction or having the capacity for it. I just don't understand how that is so hard to grasp, and I wish that it was understood better. Literally this. If you are feeling anything outside of heteronormative stuff, um, and I know that there's also a romantic term for that and I can't remember what it is. Am I normativity? Something like that. I'm, I'm horrible. But if you are fe not feeling that kind of attraction, you are outside of what people consider the norm, aka you are part of the queer community because you are not going to experience or have a heterosexual experience. Even people who are heteroromantic asexual are still not going to have the same exact experience as someone who is heterosexual and heteroromantic. This is one of the things that I really wish people would understand better. And this comment is 100% correct. It needs to be talked about more. Being asexual, being aromantic, being a ace makes you queer. You are part of the queer community, even though sometimes the queer community just doesn't even want us either. And it's just like, well, bless, but we're still here and we're still part of it because we're not experiencing what heterosexual people experience. <sighs> yes, I wish more people understood that as well. They didn't just see asexuality as, oh, you're choosing not to have sex. Oh, you're straight. Like, the assumptions that are there when you say, oh, I'm asexual or I'm aromantic or I'm part of the spectrum or whatever. There are so many assumptions that most people have when you tell them that and they just kind of infantilize you and it's not okay and they assume that you're, you know, just spicy straight and it's like, shut, shut up. <laughs> no one is asking for your opinion right now. Yes, I very much wish more people understood. And the last thing that ace people wish you knew is many people don't find out asexuality is even a thing until later in life, including myself. So many of us struggle for a long time before realizing there's a name for who we are. So no, it is not a young person thing. People of all ages can identify as asexual. This makes me so happy because honestly it wasn't until I started making this channel, posting asexual content, and getting comments from people in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, I think even 60s, I've had someone comment being like, I didn't realize I was asexual until I saw your video or saw something else and was able to finally realize that there's a word for what I felt my whole life and it's liberating and it's wonderful and I finally understand who I am. And that's one of the most powerful things about what I do and what other asexual content creators do is we're able to reach people who might not know about what asexuality is, even if there are people leaving hate comments or saying things and like I don't exist and all of that. Bruh, I'm an I'm a demisexual, biromantic, non-binary person. I, according to everyone, should not exist. So I don't care what they say. As long as people know that there's someone out there like them, or that there's a label out there that encompasses the experience that they've had and they've had for decades sometimes and feel broken and what's wrong with them and why do I never seem to feel what everyone else is feeling, what's wrong with me, it just doesn't feel right, it never feels right. And it's okay because you're able to finally like figure out, oh, I'm ace and it's okay and there's a word for that and you can figure out who you are and that's a beautiful thing. That's all the human experience is supposed to be, just figuring out your authentic self. Yeah, I really wish people knew that 
it's not just a young person thing. Literally one of the very first like asexual blogs even was made in like the early 2000s. So the people who are making that site have got to be in their 40s and 50s now. Like, come on, it's not just something. It's just not like a Tumblr thing, trust me. There are so many ace people out there of all ages. It's not just a young person thing. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you wish people knew about asexuality and the asexual spectrum. I am so sorry that I wasn't able to get to everyone's comments. I absolutely love seeing them. If you want to see a part two, be sure to leave the comment there as well so that I know that you want to see more content like this and so that people can know that the ace community is real and thriving and dope. And we've got cake and dragons and Denmark, maybe. We'll take over someday. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.